Hello, I'm Darren Hermans with Cambium Networks in the Enterprise Wi-Fi Group. Today we're going to be talking about unboxing the XV2-22H Wi-Fi 6 wall plate access point. Now this new access point from Cambium was actually introduced with two others, so it has two companion APs that go along with it. The 21X ceiling mount AP and the 23T outdoor Wi-Fi 6 AP. Other videos will cover those two other access points, but this one we'll talk about the 22H wall plate AP. So let's go ahead and jump right into that right now. All right, so here's our box, it's a very compact little box. What I encourage you to do as soon as you get the box is flip it over to the back side and snap that QR code right there. You've heard me say that before, and I'll keep saying it again. Uh, snap the QR code to see the installation guides, management guides, all the information that you need uh, about the access point. So opening up the box, first thing we see is our regulatory leaflet. Please be sure to read that, or at least scan, skim it, make sure you understand uh, the intended use of this access point. Now I'll take it out of the box, out of its protective bag. There is another protective liner right over the top surface here on the logo, which you can remove. It just helps protect it from fingerprints and smudges when you're done with your installation. So there's the access point. Now at the bottom of the box, we have some more pieces. We have a bracket, we have an RJ45 cable, very important, and we have a bag of extra screws. Now mostly these the extra screws, I don't know, I'm not quite sure we have so many screws there, but we're going to show you how we're going to use at least some of them today. All right, let's jump right into that here. So um, what do we know about this access point? So first of all, the way that the bracket installs, very simple. Uh, if you've used other Cambium wall plate APs, you'll recognize this. There's two hooks at the top and a nut at the bottom, and we're just simply going to slide the hooks and we're going to drop a set screw into the bottom, and now the AP is done. Now the interesting thing, see it's nice, it's nice and compact, it's a little bit smaller. You notice what's, what's interesting about this particular bracket is this is the same bracket that we use on the previous generation Wi-Fi 5 E430. So this is the Wi-Fi 5 E430, and we notice it's exactly the same bracket. See that? All the way around. Drop a set screw in the bottom. What does that mean? Well, the, the benefit of that is that now if you have to if you have to upgrade one of these Wi-Fi 5 installations to Wi-Fi 6, you don't need to reinstall the bracket. You can simply remove the access point and just connect the new AP right onto the existing bracket. So that's a nice bit of a backwards compatibility. Now this bracket, you'll notice the whole pattern's on it. It fits uh, North America style uh, single gang uh, junction boxes with these vertical patterns here. We can also fit single gang junction boxes and the horizontal patterns in that found commonly in the European Union or UK or other countries that follow those types of standards. Um, we can also reuse this AP with the same flush wall mount adapter that we previously used with the E430. Remember that backwards compatibility comes into play there and it makes it more easier to, for you to reuse some of those same accessories. And we can reuse the desktop adapter. Now I happen to have a desktop adapter here, so I'm going to show that to you since I have it. All right, so remember the backwards compatibility. Now, I'll also show you the first use case or one of the use cases for this RJ45 cable. On the access point, we'll notice we have ETH1, that's a gigabit ethernet port with PoEN, and this one's labeled pass-through, pass-through. This port on the bottom is electrically connected to this pass-through port here on the outside of the AP. So all we have to do is actually put this in as a jumper cable, basically. That's what it is. See, now there's your RJ45 cable. It's just a jumper cable. Now we're going to put, that, put this bracket ad adapter right over the top of the whole thing. We're going to drop our set screw in the bottom. So now, now your cable is, is connected. And now what happened is, the now the pass-through port here becomes your gig E1. It's now electrically connected to gig E1, which is on the back. And then just slide the AP onto the adapter, like that. And now you're done, there is your, there's your desktop adapter with the Wi-Fi 6 uh, wall plate AP in this type of a form factor desktop adapter form factor. There's an example of reusing the existing bracket systems with this new AP. Now, what else can you do? Well, 
in a normal installation, when you're mounting the AP to the wall, you're going to first mount this, this bracket onto the junction box, and then you're going to have a cable coming out of it, an RJ45 cable. Usually that cable is terminated on a female keystone connector. And that's where this little stubby RJ45 comes into play. Plug it into ETH1, run it through the hole in the bracket, connect it to the female RJ45 connector inside the wall socket, and then just simply, as we talked about, slide the AP onto the bracket, drop a set screw in the bottom, and now you're done with your installation. And there's your RJ45 stubby cable being used. The screws in this little baggie can actually be used as alternative screws. If you lose the ones that are already with your junction box, you can reuse these screws to mount this bracket to the junction box. All right, let's take another look at these ports here. Uh, Giggy one, this port right here, uh, it says ETH1 PoEN. PoEN. That means you can actually power this AP. It takes up to takes actually less than 15 watts to power the access point. If you're using the PoE out function, you want to bring about 30 watts into that port so that you can use the PoE out and power something else like a voice over IP phone or even another access point for that matter. Now there's one other option here. ETH2 can also be used as a PoE in port, powered port. Some people, when they install this AP on the wall, the flush wall mount adapter, they may not want to use this jumper cable, in which case they can use ETH2 as an alternative method to connect the AP to the to PoE and as a WAN port. ETH3 is going to be your PoE out, it's gigabit ethernet, with up to 15 watts power out for an external device. So there's your wall plate AP from Cambium Networks, the XV2 um, dash 22H. So let's go ahead and uh, let's move on a little bit and talk a little bit more about this AP to summarize this. The XV2 dash 22H it is a dual radio 2x2 two two with three gigabit uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. Two ports are PoE in, one port is PoE out, and there is one electrical pass through port. This AP can be managed by CN Maestro Cloud, CN Maestro on premises even managed by XMS Cloud for those types of deployments. The key thing about this technology, one of the key things I think you're going to like is the backwards compatible mounting adapters. Uh, so easy to install, easy to manage with CN Maestro and XMS. I hope you enjoy this new access point from Cambium Networks. Mm -hmm.